it, wouldn't you? You'd sort of feel you that it was the... Would. And I suppose <laughs> that much the same could be said, perhaps, of the, uh, the principle of umpires now having sole authority with regard to, dec to decreeing whether bad light should be... Uh, sufficient for players to stay on or go off and uh, mm -hmm. that's something else that's now been extracted from the games well I mean uh, the other ridiculous situation with that is when, when you're watching a game of cricket with television cameras and everything there and they've actually got um, lights in the ground and they don't use them I can never quite work out and they say oh it's because it's only for certain games and certain fixtures and you think well crumbs you know you've got a f full house here you've got people watching on the television as well that, that always is a funny one I don't quite understand that one but you see there again what might have suggested cricket is so filled with strange anomalies and idiosyncrasies yeah. that it wouldn't be English cricket particularly if we didn't have them now the head groundsman bless him has wandered off marginally more quickly than he did when he uh, when he wandered on. So whether that suggests anything or not, I'm not sure. Now I'm going to uh, to to cut in there, not simply because the weather is brightening up, but not insignificantly. Uh, my uh, Pete uh, Skinner has joined us from Simpson. 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 <laughs> Sorry, Simpson. Simpson. <laughs> I, I do apologise, Pete. That's my first gaff of the day, uh, <laughs> and um, he's uh, I believe going to join us for some. Uh, Interactions, some conversations, some discussion. From the BBC, of course. Absolutely, from the BBC. Mm. And uh, that goes without saying. It's great to have you here, Peter. I must say, to have a BBC um, man of your ilk on the, uh, the programme is, is indeed uh, a sy symptom of uh, hopefully where we're going here. So I'm going to attempt to hand over the apparatus to you. Uh, and we will improvise with Ben and I as best we can. So if I can ask you kindly just to take a seat. And... Um, Good to have you with us. On uh, you're well clad with your bobble hat, gloves, scarf, typical county cricket gear, really. <laughs> and um, I shall ask you to don my headphones. The, the I, Duke I, of the North, there. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I hope Ben and I can um, can improvise with regard Indeed. to the handheld mic. So. I'm bigger headed than you are. Um, so uh, <laughs> I'll let me hand this over to you. <laughs> oh, I feel terrible. I just no, it's a pleasure, pleasure uh, to have you. I'm wonderful, uh, to, wonderful to have you. Stolen your equipment, uh, you, you, uh, stolen your thunder. That they say, Julian. Not I do apologise. Not at all. Lovely to, to great graces for your presence. Oh, I, I know it must have been somewhat boring over there, waiting for something to happen. Uh, it's never boring at a cricket ground. No, that's true. Oh, gosh, never, I like people watching. Scene. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Um, but no, have you? Um, you've been watching the Test match then out in uh, Sri Lanka? Yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, been getting up at five thirty. Good stuff. Uh, which has um, been uh, of uh, much delight to my wife, who uh, loves being woken up at that time for no reason. <laughs> She's not a cricket person, unfortunately. Just tell us, Pete, if, uh, your role with regard to the technical side of uh, being at an event such as this, um, what, in layman's terms, would you regard as your modus operandi on a day like today uh, on an event such as this? Well, BBC Somerset don't cover championship cricket, uh, unfortunately, which is why you guys do such a splendid job here. Um, uh, so normally I would be back in the Taunton studio working on our normal programmes, keeping an eye on things on, on the BBC Sport website or Crick Info Indeed. Uh, and reading the live text. Obviously we cover all the one-day games um, live and I believe you're joining us later in the summer for those, Ben. Yes, yes, I'm looking forward to that. Um, May the 27th, it's etched on my mind. Yeah, Very and, looking forward to that. And um, you'd be surprised how many thousands of people listen from all across the world via the internet it's, it's mm. extraordinary when we were at Durham two seasons ago we were getting three, four hundred emails a day from Gosh. people listening in Hungary Australia Hungary. South Africa wow. yeah Budapest um, Finland it was absolutely wonderful so wow, wow. The Somerset Wyvern goes far and wide, I can, <laughs> yeah. I can assure you of that. It's amazing, isn't it, what can be done now with the internet? But certainly, uh, I think with, with um, the situation in the United States, it's very interesting. I'm always interested if there's any, been any listeners from out there, because um, there's always attempts to try and get the game off the ground over there. But baseball is such a huge sport, and, and, and also the... Of course, the close nature of the ties between cricket and baseball is a contentious subject, you know, out in America. They have the double-day myth. Have you read um, that book, Netherland? I've heard of it. Yeah, I'd like, it's, it's a great book. It's, it's about it. one man's ambition to bring a, uh, an international match to New York, actually, where yeah, there are lo yeah. lots of sort of... Uh, uh, Asian expats absolutely. living out there, and it, it was yeah, just a good yeah. book. Very yeah, good. absolutely. I mean, it's quite extraordinary when you think the very first test match was, was between Canada and the United States of America. Well, back when George Washington was mm. president, they, cricket was the national sport of America, would you believe? So um, you, you never know. You yeah. know, I, I should think that... Um, 
you know, there should be an audience there. But do we really need it or want it? You know, the game's doing perfectly well, you could say, as it is. So perhaps leave it be. It's best as it is. But <laughs> I think the more people that like cricket, that the better, uh, enjoy yeah. cricket and that, that want to get involved, the better. That's absolutely. true. That's it's very true. Far away. Anyway, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure mm. popping in. Anyway, lovely. Yes, yeah, lovely speaking to, to you. To, yeah, absolutely. And, well... It's brightening up over there, isn't it? So Indeed, yes. yes. It, it, it does look like it's deceptively brightening up, but uh, the weather's had a funny habit of, of cutting us in our tracks, but we, we've enjoyed ourselves. And thank you, Peter. Thank, thank you so much, much for joining us. Really kind of Lovely to meet you, and I'll see you again on the 27th. Indeed, so <laughs> Lovely to have you with us, albeit briefly, but on this rather rain sodden day. But uh, we are hopeful that something will happen before the close of play, other than the announcement that there is going to be no play, of course. But... Uh, um, one is always optimistic. One has to be by heart an optimist, I think, in, 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 in cricketing circles. Uh, I, you know, without the risk, risk of sounding somewhat monotonous and repetitive, uh, let me just say that it doesn't appear to be raining. In fact, people are standing quite contentedly yes, out. It does look playable you in know. at the moment, but you know, it's it's one of those other you know things of the game. You know, it is a, it can get very dangerous. You know, in the outfield. It is easy to be critical, but when you you fall, uh, you know, in the outfield, it, when it's wet, it, you, particularly in the cold, it, you can get a, a chill in your muscles, and it could sort of ruin the early part of your your, your season. So they have to obviously get. A, get the pitch ready and, and get, get it fit for play and that's going to take time I, I don't know, do you think there'll be play today? Do you think? One has to say yes I suppose um, I, I, it's possible, I think you know, the, the, the question always is on occasions such as these is you know, if there's no further rain, and it's not so much a case of what's fallen, given the dry weather we've had for weeks and weeks and sizzlingly hot weather too for the last fortnight, it's always a case of what's yet, what's happening uh, overfoot as opposed to what may be underfoot. It is worth pointing out, and I hadn't noticed this, Ben, that um, mm. there is a significant sprinkling of spectators, there are a significant sprinkling uh, uh, of spectators under, in the Sir Ian Botham stand who... I don't recall, was seated there some half hour or so ago. So whether they know more than you or I remains to be seen. But, you see, it's, 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 it's frustrating insofar as... I mean, obviously, we're delighted it's not raining heavens hard, but it's, it's, it's still sufficiently ambiguous as to, as, as to make people believe that there will be significant play today, mm -hmm. even if it's just for an hour or an hour and a half. I think that's very possible. The Quantox mm -hmm. have now become visible again. And again, in the southwest, uh, it's, it's really quite bright. In fact, mm -hmm. you know, um, almost excitingly so. Um, yeah, certainly, you know, likewise, uh, things are pretty good at the moment. I see they've got a... Um, is that a new scorp? board over yes, there, indeed. kind yes, of little a, a makeshift new, yep, a new school mini school board, board by there. the Colin Atkinson yeah. Pavilion. We, we've had some significant, nice uh, development. Yep, some significant developments during the course of the winter months. Um, we effectively got two and a half scoreboards, or two and a bit scoreboards, really. that's a little sort of, uh, one of those sort of miniature scoreboards, which, which simply says total runs scored, wickets, overs. Um, but uh, the Sir Ian Botham stand, I think, has had a lick of paint. The Colin Atkinson Pavilion certainly had the words of the Colin Atkinson Pavilion re uh, rehashed, and it's mm. always, it looks a lovely place. The long room looks lovely, um, and um, and I think uh, I, I, at risk of of, of um, sounding out of place, the the uh, the microphonic uh, PA system has also been altered. I think the um, the sound system is of a greater volume, and. Uh, one hopes that the clarity of, of uh, vocal input is of a similar ilk. Um, cause we've had problems with that for, for some time. Mm. Um, the, um, it's just interesting to see how a ground evolves during the course of the winter, perhaps. Mm. Mm. Well, it is extraordinary when you look back a few years how it's changed. Uh, it's often seen old footage of, I know there's a World Cup game here back in 1983, um, was it the West Indies we played, or was it India? I can't remember. I mean, it's so long ago now, but I've I've seen I, the footage. Yeah, yeah, India must um, have been. Uh, yeah. on ESPN Classic, I think it wasn't. Um, it, it is. It was great fun, actually. It looked like it had tremendous charm back then, but you could really see the the differences. Um, it was extraordinary. Obviously, the church is is an ever present site, but the, the new Pegasus flats. Um, uh, 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 oh, yeah, big 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 old flats there. We used to have um. Have a, a car park there and an avenue of trees, and then you look round and you look at the Colin Atkinson Pavilion, which of course was 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 a pavilion built in 1981, and then I think did they knock it down two years ago that's to build right, the Colin yeah. Atkinson from yeah, scratch? Yeah. So that's with a long one coming in there, and of mm. course the um, Andrew Caddick. 
pavilion as the, well. The, the Pegasus there. apartments, obviously, mm. you mentioned going up to our left here. That was the museum's here. still here, of course. That, that'll here. never go. <laughs> uh, and there was an occasion some years back when uh, Morrison's, which is now the Morrison's department store, uh, is now uh, obscured by the Pegasus flats in terms of where we, from where we're sitting. But um, there was an occasion towards the end of the summer one year when the entire place caught fire. Uh, as a result of an arson attack, and uh, the smoke billowed over the ground and um, uh, caused play to be suspended. And I, my initial response to that was all that lovely bacon going up in smoke. Now, <laughs> uh, the, the other, uh, <clears throat> another feature which is well beyond the ground, it must be said, I'm happy to, to announce, is the, the fire pool viridor building, which is happening not on quite the same scale, but not far short. Mm -hmm and is equally as, equally as uh, unappealing and aesthetically mm. grim as anything that now um, abounds at Headingley or Old Trafford. Um, mm. it's, it's a great big, uh, huge red brick thing which has gone up in, in a matter of... Proboscis. Mm. Yep, uh, a couple of months or so, really. Indeed, we've still yeah. got the lovely yeah. view of the trees here. Uh, we've still just to the railway station, um, and there are no trains, sadly, so blowers would struggle to, uh, <laughs> to, to to paint the full picture. We've got the cars going over the bridge, of course, the Priory Road Bridge, so that's always a source of comment, uh, how many green cars... Mm. You know, we, we, my brother and I used to play a marvellous game mm. uh, where we, if we were walking from A to B along the road, we'd count the number of red cars or green cars between point A and point B, and the, the moment we got to that particular point, that would be the number of runs that the England captain would get in his next test innings. Uh, you could turn absolutely anything into cricket. Dice cricket mm. is something mm. I think I've waxed eloquent about many times on air. Well, of course, now with, with PlayStations and the, the ilk, you know, there's, there's endless computer... Um, simulated cricket games and the like. Um, I always used to play one called Test Match, which was this, this rather funny s scenario where you had a sort of pitch that you'd create. Uh, it was a bit like, well, it was like a toy, really, with the matting that would go on, the green matting that would go on a, a kitchen table or whatever. you fix up the boundary, and you had this sort of uh, bowler, which, which you'd put this, this little uh, ball bearing, I suppose, in, in it, a cup, where, where the hand is, oh, and, down then, the and then it'd go down, down the chute, the <laughs> and there'd be another chap with a, with a little batsman, Uber, Uber. Yeah, and, and, yes. he, and it was it caused endless hours of fun in our house. I would, I, I, and the, <laughs> the fielders, of course, have to take the catch in their little sort of paper. Yes, stand, that's right. Yeah. You know, and there was always great but, debate as to whether the ball was sticking out for it to have been merited as a drop catch, or yeah, you know, yeah. they needed this sort of uh, obviously Hawkeye or the DRS or some such to. Well, now we go. Yeah, exactly. You uh, go to the D uh, DRS, sort of. and of course. The, the Great, the great pioneering uh, cricket game was the Sibutia, of course, mm. uh, which was um, lovely to see those little stumps knocked for six by the red ball, but it mm. got out of mm. control so often. You know, the, 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 the dice cricket now, I'm not talking about the standard dice that you can still buy, where if you're not careful, two things happen. Mm. One is you had far too many people stumped. Uh, or run out, which always looks mm. silly on a scorecard. Second, you have uh, very low scores. Indeed. But, uh, but Indeed. the dice version of the game that I promulgated at the schools I've taught at over the years, two ordinary dice, if you, uh, and you have, you, for, for the sake of argument, your top seven batsmen are your recognised batsmen. That's very important. So mm. you throw mm. two dice. Mm. If, it, if it lands on a double, double one, double two, whatever it is, then you're out. Um, oh, hold on. Ah, lunch right, will be taken at 12.30, yeah. so... <laughs> lunch taken at 12.30, so... Uh, yep, lunch at 12.30 in the event of no further rain taking place. That's not entirely unexpected, Ben, mm -hmm. but... Uh, now, with regard to the dice cricket, if it's a uh, top seven of your recognised batsman, you throw two dice. If it's a double, it's out. But you don't get many double twos, double fours, double fives. So the chances are your top seven will score a significant number of runs. Mm -hmm. Now... In terms of dismissal, you take one dice and throw it. If it lands on a one, you're caught. If it lands on a two, you're OBW. If it lands on a three, you're bold. Right. And so on. <laughs> um, now, it's not entirely foolproof, but then, of course, you have your other issues coming into play. You have your top five bowlers. It could be, it could be McGrath, Gillespie, Warren, and whoever it is. And you give them all a number, and you take another dice and throw it once to see which bowler took that particular wicket. Now, mm -hmm. if it's a catch... Because it's, it, it, it's landed on a one. You, you <laughs> That's so complicated. Land on a one for a catch, two right. over three bold. Right. So let's assume a catch has been taken. You take one dice, 
and throw it once to see whether the top six have taken the catch. And next time there's a catch, you alternate it, so it could land on it. It could land on 12, of course, in which case you have to do it again. But uh, if it lands on 10, you know that the number 10 batsman has taken the catch. Now, if he happens to have been the bowler who took the wicket as well, <laughs> say it's bowler two, it's caught and bowled. Oh, and, and clearly, obviously, you have to work out a system whereby your top scorer, uh, we all, always used to say, was a not-out batsman. Now, you can do, we used to do test averages, have an entire test series, England and the West Indies in the 70s, and we'd, have, we'd do test series averages, bowling averages, so if you've got, if for example Richards was caught, caught Greg, bowled Willis for 27, Willis would have taken one for 27. Right, right. So, um, but you can do test series averages, even career averages. I did an entire career average for Dennis Amos. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, enough of this. Ben, if I can ask you, we're getting something on the PA regarding county scores. Indeed, yes. But I'm going to ask yes. Ben to give us the full updated scores from the yes. Yes, we... machine. Yes, <clears throat> we... Yeah, as you can hear there, Derbyshire 51 for, f for four, actually, after 20.1 overs. Martin Guptill caught Kurtz of Old Brooks, 15. Borrington caught Wakeley Bold Brooks for one. Uh, Mad Madsen Bold Daggett for one. Uh, Durston LBW Bold Brooks for 17. Redfern not out, 14. And Whiteley not out, one. It's 50. One for four there, Derbyshire uh, playing Northamptonshire. So Martin Guptill, curse of the commentator, didn't didn't do awfully well in the end. Out for 15. Chaminda Vass uh, playing in that game, interestingly enough. And um, of course, Chaminda Vass. Um, what a shame! Don't Sri Lanka miss him? Uh, you can imagine Vass still playing and Milinga running in. But uh, of course, you know it's funny. You're only as good as your last victory because or loss because we weren't uh, feeling sorry for the Sri Lankans in the last test when they beat us. So it's just interesting how I noticed with the commentary on from the BBC on I was listening to earlier that I'm um, talking about the weakness of the opposition <laughs> and I thought well, they wouldn't be saying this. This was the last test match, but no, certainly we, we, they've lost so many good bowlers, great bowlers really, Malinga, um, and, and, and of course the great Mira Litherin, Um And uh, it's interesting to see Chaminda Vass playing there, but. Um, uh, Essex are 76 for two in their county championship division, division two game. Billy Godleman is on 19, Adam Wheater on naught. Um, Gloucestershire won the toss in that one, elected to field. That'll be of interest to the West Country fraternity. Uh, Peterson, I think that must be the South African, Alviro Peterson, uh, was caught Gibbon bold Gibbon, <laughs> must be brothers, for 15. Uh, Tim Wesley uh, caught Dent bold Sachs will be for 33. Patini, Mark Patini. Uh, caught C Coffrey bowled uh, Muckle for nine and Wheater not out not so that's 80 for three there uh, in that Essex uh, game against Gloucestershire um, so uh, yes it's uh, interesting to see how many games are, are going on up and down the country Leicestershire 53 for four um, <clears throat> I'll just finish this last score here. Yes, uh, 53 for four. Uh, Ramnuesh Sarwan uh, playing for Leicestershire today. A very interesting signing, um, that particular signing. Um, I have a particular interest in West Indies cricket. It's been something, I, I guess, because I grew up in uh, quite a West Indian area in Notting Hill when I was a child and uh, knew a lot of um, cricketers from that part of the world as well when I was younger, so I suppose I've got a little bit of interest, to put it lightly, though um, anyone who's seen Fire in Babylon recently mm. I'm sure um, has got more than an interest, <laughs> but uh, Sarwan um, is playing there, he's not out 13, interesting, he's got a games, game coming up against the West Indians 